Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're taking a look at the illustrated edition of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, written by J.K. Rowling. This book originally came out in 2001, but was re-released in 2017 with the illustrated edition. Now before we look at the book, make sure you hit that subscribe button to become a part of our wonderful online family. And without further ado, let's go and look at the book. So, here is the book. Let me just tell you real quick what the measurements are. So this book measures 12 by 10 by 1 inch deep. And it was originally released in 2001 as a part of the Hogwarts Library Collection, but re-released in 2017 with this new illustrated edition. This book retails for $34.99. However, you can probably find this on Amazon for around $24. So probably about $10 off, most likely. So definitely get this off of Amazon. Do not go to Barnes & Noble to buy this. It's totally worth getting off Amazon. So a few other things. Look at the front cover. This griffin on the front is glossy. So in the light, it definitely reflects, as well as look at that gold foiling for Newt Scamander's name, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, and then down here, J.K. Rowling. Oh, it's, it's very beautiful. On the sides here, there's more gold foiling for the names here, as well as Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them and the Scholastic logo. Another thing, you may have seen my review on the Tales of Beelzebub. Bard. These two books are exactly the same size and they have the same spine layout, so when you set them right next to each other, the, the names are in the same spot, the illustrator, or the, um, the publisher is there, sorry about that, and then the, the name is right in the center, so they, they all line up and look nice together. On the back, you have some different uh, there you have some different magical creatures that are inside of the book, and down here just gives a little frame of what Newt Scamander, of who Newt Scamander is, and about the book. So down here too, you can also see the barcode, the Wizarding World logo, Comic Relief logo, Lumos logo, Scholastic, and the price. So this book goes, um, the profits to this book go to fund Comic Relief as well as Lumos, which are two charitable organizations. Lumos being J.K. Rowling's organization, and she has supported Comic Relief for a very long time since this book originally came out. This It originally came out to fund Comic Relief. So, moving right along, let's go ahead and take a little bit of a look inside the book before we flip over to the time lapse. On the inside here is the inside cover page. Very, very pretty. I really love this image here. It kind of looks, it has like an ocean and like a map behind it. Really interesting. And then a little bit about the author. So this is actually about Newt Scamander, the author of this book. And then over onto the side is Things also done by J.K. Rowling, the illustrated editions, companion novels, and Hogwarts Library. And this nice opening page. Copyright page here. Got a thank you. And then here is the, the table of contents. So, a brief word from Newt Scamander, and he writes down here in the Dither's Note. So, the idea behind this book is that it has been released to muggles from the magical world. So, it has explanation side of there on all of this stuff that is inside the book. As if, like, of course muggles wouldn't know about these fantastic beasts that are inside this book. So, it kind of just goes through and explains everything in this section about the book. What is a beast? A brief history and muggle awareness of Fantastic Beasts, see what I'm talking about. So it's it's really interesting. I think it's an interesting move that they went that way um, over, you know, a, a different way. Instead of just like releasing it as it would be for Wizards, I think that's, you know, I feel like some people would like it. I personally would rather just have it, I don't really need that stuff, but you know, whatever people want, I guess. I think it's fine, I don't honestly really care that much. So over here on the right, there is Ministry of Magic classifications. So they classify everything in X's. So 1X all the way up to 5X. And these are on each beast. I will show you one of them, for example. But it shows the different levels of danger, basically. And then over to the right is a Chinese Fireball Dragon. So 
here is the first beast in the book and it goes alphabetically not all of the beasts that we know from the Harry Potter series are in this book. For instance, the blast ended Scroots are not in here, which I think is interesting, as well as a few others that I don't know off the top of my head. Um, you can probably find that online if you're actually that interested. So over here, right underneath Acromantula, you have the Ministry of Magic classification as a 5x, so very, very dangerous. And then underneath, it gives a nice description of basically what the acromantula is and then there are footnotes throughout all of these that talk about what's going on with them if there's like something that is referenced in this section that a muggle might not know about the footnote is down there to just explain that so i will show you one other and then i will go to the time lapse so here is the here's a here's a dragon this one actually doesn't have a Ministry of Magic classification on it, but this page is really good to open up to because I can transition very easily to the fact this book has included a bookmark inside of it. So this is one of the ribbon bookmarks that they use on the illustrated editions of the book. So this is on Tales of Beetle Bard. It's on all of the four illustrated editions of Harry Potter that have come out so far. And I hate them. I think they're such a pain. I, I think it's completely ridiculous that they included these. I, I have very strong opinions about these. I hate them. And this is why. If you look right down here, you can kind of see in between the book, this bookmark has imprinted an image of it into the page because it's been stored for a long time in a warehouse before I got. So it came with this indentation on it from this bookmark. And it's kind of hard to see, but you can definitely tell on the camera here that there is an indentation right here. And it's got it's got the marks of this of this ribbon on there. It imprints really easily into the page and I just it really bothers me because I try and keep books in really good condition because that's just I'm a collector and I like to have it everything as perfect as I can be and it's really frustrating when I get a book and it's got this inside of there and it's got it's got the ribbon print on it now I don't know I didn't get this book directly from a bookstore and I didn't get it on the day it came out so I don't know if when it originally comes out if it doesn't have it in there because I got this through Amazon because Amazon has this for a lot cheaper and I don't really want to pay $35 because I don't think it's worth $35. I think it's worth $24. I think it's exactly what, that's a very fair price for what you're getting here. But it, it may just be because they're keeping it at an Amazon distribution center for too long or something. But I just, I really hate how it has these indentations out there. And it's only on one page, which is nice, but... I don't know, I just, I think they're frustrating. They're kind of, they're kind of a nice novelty to have, but in the long run, I think they're just really frustrating. Um, one other thing to note on these dragon pages, if I can find it, there's actually, here it is, there's actually a pullout. So right here, it shows some of the different dragons, but then this page flips open to reveal a very large dragon there, Eurcranian Iron Belly. So a very large one, these pages flip out to reveal that. And I think that's a, a pretty cool feature. I always like my pages flip out. You just have to be careful so they don't get bent. So that is all I'm going to show you in this for right now. I'm going to flip over to the time lapse. And then when I get done with that, I will talk about my final thoughts with this book. So here we go. So there was the time lapse and one other thing I want to show you all in the back here there is a table of contents and it shows each beast alphabetically and the exact page that's on if you're interested in that if you're I, I use this a lot when I'm reading the books and I just want to have some additional information on what they're talking about so I can easily find what they've talked about in the book here by the start of the lever you know kelp kelpie leprechaun all that stuff. And on the back here has J.K. Rowling as well as the illustrator on the same page and 
it talks about some things. It, it talks about all the stuff that J.K. Rowling has done, all the stuff the Illustrator has done. Really cool. What I think is interesting about this is they chose to put them right next to each other. Unlike in the Tales of Bilo Bard and other ones that we've seen, J.K. Rowling gets her own page here and you flip the page over and then the Illustrator has a whole page. They've just gone and put them on the, you know, the same, the same page. On the back here, it has a brief history of what Comic Relief is and then kind of the mission statement of what Lumos is, so you know where your money is going when you buy this book. Another one of these kind of compass illustrations here that we see throughout the book, and then the inside cover again. One more thing, I want to talk about the paper quality. Paper quality, very good. It feels slightly thinner than the Tales of Beetle Bard, however it's still very, very thick. Very thick paper, won't tear very easily, and it's not glossy, unlike in the Harry Potter books, like the illustrated editions of the books, they use glossy paper, um, kind of more custom to like a print. This one is more on like a thick cardstock that you would have in like a home printer, for instance. So that is it for this book. I would totally go and buy this. I think this is such an amazing book to have. It's beautiful. The illustrations inside of it are amazing. I would totally go and spend the money and get this book. I think it's a, a great thing to have. Out of all of the illustrated books that they've done, other than the Harry Potter books, the actual, you know, one through four right now, I would get this one. Of the, of the companion library, I would definitely get this one over any of the other ones that have come out. So, I'd love to hear about your thoughts in the towel section down below. Please tell me, what do you think of this book? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Do you, is there something that you would change about it? Let me know. I love, I love hearing from you. Um, another thing, please tell me what other books do you want me to review on this channel? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the towel section down below too. And if you have any other thoughts or questions about this book, please leave those also in the towel section down below. And without further ado, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Share this video with friends. And turn on that bell so you never miss a new video from, from us. New videos are coming out very soon. So, as always, thanks for watching. I hope you're doing so well and this video helped inform your buying decision and just gave you a little bit of joy in your life today. So, I'll, I will see you next time in another video. Peace out. Bye.